Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scooter Buyo playing vanilla Minecraft 15W39B of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC edition. And uh, this video is a little bit of a, uh, a riff on the standard item elevator. Um, this is just something I put together uh, for fun um, <laughs> based on some of the mechanics that I've been playing around with recently. Uh, so I'll show you, show you how I build this up uh, in incrementally, but it will demonstrate a couple of other uh, principles as well. So uh, the first thing I want to show is this customized water stream here. Um, uh, this water stream enables items that are coming down. Uh, so this is the input coming down here. Uh, items that are coming out of this stream will land approximately on the middle of this block, right in the dead center. Uh, and uh, that's important, uh, we'll see later, uh, but um, I, I use a combination of ice and non-slippery blocks in order to make that happen. Uh, you can fine-tune this even further because uh, slime blocks are also slippery, they're just not as slippery as ice, so you can uh, kind of tweak things uh, really fine. I, I didn't need to do that in this case, um, ice and non-slippery blocks uh, work okay. So I've got items coming down here, down this ice channel. Um, these two blocks here act as a break in order to make sure that items continuing along here have a consistent speed. Uh, if items are coming really, really fast down this channel, you might need uh, more than one non-slippery block, but in this case two is fine. Uh, so items uh, continuing uh, across these three ice blocks have a consistent speed. Um, these two blocks have flowing water here. This block here does not have flowing water. Uh, that's why the pressure plate is there. Uh, you could use a sign as well. Um, I'm using a pressure plate because I'm going to take a signal off of this later. And then the items continue around this corner on two more non-slippery blocks. And then there's six blocks of ice. Uh, four of them will have water on them and two will be bare. Uh, here's another pressure plate in order to make sure that these uh, blocks of ice don't have any water and I will be taking another signal off of this pressure plate as well. Uh, and finally at the end is a non-slippery block and items will land uh, right on the direct center. So let's uh, go ahead and see how that works. So no matter how items are in here, no matter what speed they're coming in at, if they're whatever side they're on, uh, they're always going to end up in the middle over here. Let's go take a look. There it is. So uh, pretty much dead center. It doesn't have to be exact, but uh, close to dead center is fine. So um, uh, that's how that works. Uh, and then I've added onto that um, just my standard little um, uh, dropper that spits out items at a rate of about uh, five per second. Um, so I've just uh, I've just filled this guy with a bunch of uh, different kinds of items, uh, and um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start this, and we'll see all of those items coming, and they will all just end up right on that uh, right on the center of that block. They'll just bunch there. And that's because items don't have any collision. So, uh, in, you know, an unlimited amount of items basically can occupy that same central spot. So, all right, that's enough of that. Uh, and the problem is I don't actually want a continuous stream of items because that messes up the signals that are coming from these pressure plates here. Uh, so this first pressure plate I've wired up uh, to a regulator. I've got a piston here and I've got a piston over here. And as an item comes across this pressure plate, uh, after uh, I'm going to take a signal that's right here, and after a four tick delay, um, five if you include the redstone torches here, those pistons will retract, creating two traps. Uh, they'll retract at the same time, uh, creating those two traps, and uh, any items that had gotten past the first trap uh, will continue on. They'll get stuck in the second one, uh, they'll get stuck in the second one. Uh, and any new items coming down the stream will get stuck in the first trap. Uh, now the signal that came uh, that uh, uh, retracted those pistons uh, gets fed into this uh, fader pulse extender, and when it loses power, those pistons go back up. Uh, the items that uh, got collected here continue on, and the items that got uh, collected here continue on, but they will trigger the pressure plate again so they'll get stuck in the second trap uh, the next time around. Uh, so let's go ahead and see that in action. So we've got items getting bunched up in the two different traps. One bunch gets sent along. The next bunch gets trapped and then it gets sent along. So there is, so they're coming in clusters, not uh, too huge clusters, but they're they're coming in clusters. All right. 
Uh, and now here is where the magic happens. Uh, before I explain this, I, I want to start these two identical machines. There's uh, this one here and there's one way over there. They're both the same, uh, but I want to start both of those and I'll discuss uh, in a little bit the reason why I have two of these so far apart. Let me go ahead and start that one. And I'll start this one here. All right, so uh, now the items are coming down from this uh, from this dropper, uh, coming down pretty heavy down the stream. Uh, like I said, five per second, so a reasonable uh, a reasonable stream, and they're getting bunched up by the regulator, and they're getting sent along in bunches here. Uh, and what's going to happen is they're going to land on the center, the middle center of that block uh, right there. Uh, and uh, as they pass uh, over this pressure plate here. Uh, there is going to be an 8-tick delay that sends a signal that activates uh, this pair of pistons over here, this one here, and this one here. This piston is going to push this glass block uh, right here, uh, creating an enclosed space for the items uh, uh, that are resting on that block there. And this piston right here is going to push this fence post downwards uh, into, the, uh, into that cluster of items. Uh, and the items then uh, will begin to rise up through the fence post. Uh, now, uh, this signal is also fed into a fader pulse extender. Uh, I could have carried the, sa the signal from here uh, over to this pair of pistons as well uh, with an appropriate delay, uh, but I have two different uh, um, fader pulse extenders just to prove the point that they're, um, that they're distinct systems. Uh, you can use any kind of regulator that you want with this um, as long as the items are appropriately bunched as they uh, come down uh, to rest on this block here. Uh, okay, so the the items uh, that the that uh, uh, fader pulse extender will give the items uh, long enough time to rise up through the fence post. They will rise up through the uh, extended piston stem. They'll rise up through the piston and they'll rise up through uh, all of these fence posts here, up into this glass block, uh, and into this really ugly collection point here. Um, that is ugly because there's currently a bug with hopper collect uh, hoppers uh, not detecting items that are kind of resting in the uh, concavity of the hopper itself uh, so uh, but um, otherwise uh, that glass block there could could have just been a hopper uh, so uh, I'll uh, start this and we can see uh, a couple of bunches of items uh, going up before we check um, the other two machines there all right so items are coming at a pretty good clip uh, here comes the first uh, group of items and the fence post slams into them and they just go all the way up it's it's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe this. Uh, this actually worked when I when I tried it. Uh, now, uh, the question is why a fence post uh, rather than a glass block? <laughs> Just because I can. <laughs> that, that, that's all. It probably would work better if there are, if I was using glass blocks instead of fence posts. I just thought it was really fun to use fence posts. Uh, um, I, I do lose an item every once in a while with this. Um, uh, something manages, seems to manage to escape a, a fence post uh, somehow. I'm not quite sure how it happens, but uh, <laughs> this actually is really, really stable. Uh, so um, let me go over here. Well, first of all, let's uh, shut off these machines. We don't need to hear this clicking anymore. Uh, let me go up here and see here. Okay, items are still coming in. Um, I, I'll, I'll uh, let that finish. I, I want to go check this uh, one that's further away. Uh, now, the reason why I had started two of these is because I have a suspicion, uh, and this is just a hypothesis, I don't know, I haven't dug into the code or anything, but I have a, I have a suspicion that items that are not in the view range of the player uh, have their positions and velocities updated differently. So if I, uh, if I toss an, uh, an item down on the ground here and I get a certain distance away, eventually I won't be able to see it anymore. And, and that's um, irrespective of my, uh, of my rendering distance. It just has to do with, uh, I guess, the size of the, uh, of the uh, entity. So, um, uh, but after after a while, I can't see it anymore, even though it's still there. So I um, I, I was way over there in the hopes that um, uh, all of the items here would have been out of my view range. So any updating that the game was doing to their velocities and positions would use that alternate uh, uh, updating frequency. Uh, and I did that because the position that the items need to rest on here for this to work is so sensitive. They, they really need to be in the middle of that block. So let me check what's up here. And 
absolutely everything made it up. I, 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 can't, I can't believe it. It's completely lossless, even for, uh, for that volume of a stream. Uh, and um, let me go check over here. And yeah, we've got all nine stacks of items. So, so a completely lossless uh, item elevator with some very, very unusual mechanics. Um, this is uh, uh, this is using the uh, uh, the uh, some of the new. Uh, uh, well, it's using some of the updates to uh, 1.9. This is uh, again snapshot 15w39b. Uh, so there will be some additional uh, changes to the game mechanics uh, before the official release comes out. Uh, um, but until then, if anything changes, uh, I just had to create this because I thought it was so much fun. So uh, <laughs> that's it then for this video. Um, thanks very much for watching. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments.